I don't quite remember why I started, because it was a long time ago. Uh, I was about eight years old, um, and I used to wake up really early in the mornings. And I think I'm, I'd done some poetry at school, and we'd done a little bit of writing then, and I'd found some books of poetry um, in the house somewhere, like kids anthologies, I think my brother had one. And I just took to it straight away um, and went from there. I, I wrote my first one at about eight, eight years old, I suppose. And I didn't really become serious about it in any kind of sense until I was, I suppose, studying. Um, so as an undergraduate, I started writing more. But I definitely was writing pretty consistently from, from then, from when I was a kid. Even though it's obviously the case that other people have read the poems and I've, I've written a book, there's part of me that's still not convinced that other people are going to read it anyway. And I think that it's actually good to keep that part of yourself thinking that you're just a kid writing in your room still because then you're very much writing what you feel impelled to write rather than hopefully what you think other people potentially think you should write. Saying that, it's, it's been such a you know, great surprise and, and encouragement to have people um, read it and, and, I guess, engage with it. In Australia, we have, um, I don't know, these kind of 19th century ballad years, which are like full of you know, wild horses and people reigning in wild horses and ships. And, and they're the first, the first poems I came across them and I suppose a few sort of little religious rhymes and things like that. And so there's, I, underneath it all, even though nothing that I write is anything like those things, thank goodness, I think, but um, they're my first influence, I suppose. Um, and since then, there's a, there are a few poets that are really important to me. Emily Dickinson is an important poet for me. Um, and I tend to go through periods of favoring some poets over others. Uh, but at the moment, I'm, uh, I think, getting a lot from George Oppen and Charles Reznikoff. And I've, I read a lot in translation, too, which I think is, has sort of formed my sensibility of the way I write quite a lot as well, though it's hard to, um, I don't know, really put a finger on why or how that is. I have, like, a lot of people, sort of one parent from one place and one parent from another. So my father's Australian, and I grew up there, um, my mother was English, um, was from Liverpool, and so I've very much always had a kind of divided family and, and a kind of sensibility that was slightly in two places. And I came over here um, to study quite a while ago and have been here mostly on and off kind of since. Uh, so I would definitely say I feel Australian, but I have that strong familial tie to Britain as well, and it's a place where I've lived, so I don't know, can, can people be like sort of a hybrid beast of a poet, I suppose, but I think a lot of writers are like that. No, I'm, I'm engaged with what's happening with poetry in Australia too, and, uh, and really much, very much sort of reading and digesting and getting a lot from what's happening here, what's happening there, and also what's happening in the States. Um, so... I guess all English language poetry really and then what you can get in translation too. But the wonderful thing about the internet as well is that you can have you can't, a kind of poetry community that's sort of very electronically connected as well as sort of connected through writing and through poetry which has sort of much more fluid borders than countries do I suppose. The book is my first collection um, and it's called The Striped World and I wrote it not knowing I was writing a collection because I was writing just sort of disparate poems um, over time while I was studying. Um, and it was a, a friend who was a visiting writer who sort of encouraged me to view it as a collection and, and I started viewing it as a kind of set of poems with a family resemblance then and showed it to some people, he showed it to some people and, and it became um, a book and you have to try and find that sort of unifying title. Um, and that's sort of how it came to be. And now, it's funny because I wrote the poems in it over a long period of time, I suppose about eight or nine years is between the sort of earliest and the latest one. Uh, and so they're very much 
if you're closer to some poems than others and they, I don't know, it kind of charts your mental progress or regress, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, well, I see that when I look at the poems and they deal with different things. They, there are poems drawn from my time, of course, growing up in Australia um, and that are really preoccupied with space and cities and how sort of space and memory uh, creates our sense of history, if that doesn't sound too abstract. Um, and also some poems that I wrote when I was um, in the States as well, on the East Coast, on Cape Cod, um, which was a place I'd known only through poetry before. Uh, and it was really interesting to go there and have a kind of relationship to it through poems and recognise things in it from from poems and be able to kind of smell the poems that you'd only ever read for years as well. And then so many I wrote here while I was studying um, in Britain as well. So.